covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. New trade missions are being mounted to help boost economic growth for the Bahamas. Good evening and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition. I'm LaDawn Davis and as always, it's great to have you joining us. A 20-member strong delegation led by the private sector is traveling to Haiti this week. The prominent Bahamian business persons will be meeting with top-level groups in Haiti to further propel business opportunities. The Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation is le leading the delegation representing a cross-section of industry partners. As Cyan Thompson reports, the mission is being hailed as an ideal opportunity for both countries. The Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation, as private sector strategist, is driving business for the country through a series of trade missions starting with Haiti. Chairman Chester Cooper confirming that his group is resolute on mobilizing industry and business in the Bahamas. Cooper dismisses the myth that Haiti has nothing to offer. In fact, he states, since disasters there, opportunities have been ripe in various sectors in Haiti. Plenty. Uh, prominent business persons uh, looking to see what potential opportunities there are in Haiti. This group comprises of a broad cross-section of business persons from uh, finance, insurance, uh, tourism, uh, wholesaling, uh, retailing, construction. It's, it's medical. Uh, there's really a broad cross-section of Bahamian businessmen uh, looking to see how they may expand their uh, good services or their expertise uh, to other countries. The Bahamas Chamber of Commerce has been in contact with Haitian government officials discussing business partnerships with large companies operating in that country. Cooper believes job creation and millions of dollars can flow into the economy through their business travels. A few months ago we had uh, a seminar doing business in Haiti. We had the ambassador for trade and investment uh, come and meet with, uh, with us at the chamber and business persons. And he cited numerous opportunities that's actively available in Haiti. They're open for business. The government is supporting uh, these initiatives in tourism, uh, airport development, uh, construction, uh, agriculture, uh, generally uh, uh, manufacturing with a huge population. It was intentional to have the 20-member group represent a diverse section from the business community. Cooper says this maximizes their opportunities for business. We're hoping to do more in terms of exporting our expertise, or exporting our skills and the knowledge of Bahamian business. This mission to Haiti is just the first in a series of trips. The group plans to travel to Panama and India in the coming months to establish business relationships in those countries as well. Cyan Thompson, ZNS News Network. Meantime, relief is underway for many homeowners. Tomorrow, the government's mortgage relief plan will be launched in an effort to assist hundreds of homeowners facing foreclosures. As it stands now, there are over 4,000 delinquent accounts totaling over $400 million. Chairman of the Clearing Banks Association, Nathaniel Benneby. Um, the, the number of accounts be, began to um, reduce. Uh, that's an improvement. Okay, I would like to term it as an improvement to the crisis. I think I should also add the good news is over the past several years, uh, the, the numbers have stabilized. In, in, in other words, the, the, the percentage of increase in delinquent and non-accrual mortgages, non-accrual loans are stabilizing. So that is also... Um, so in other words, the 4,000 plus is not becoming 5,000 or 6,000. So there is some stability. Now applicants must meet certain stipulations. The mortgage must have originated before June 30th, 2008. The outstanding debt and interest should not exceed $500,000. And the mortgage must be 90 days past due before August 31st this year. Those applying under the mortgage plan will have an opportunity to appeal to a panel if the application is denied.
The school policing initiative and readiness within our public school system are being highly criticized by the opposition free national movement. The former Minister of Education strongly feels the new minister failed to have all schools across the country repaired in time for the new academic school term, while giving some key examples of a number of those schools that are still not yet repaired. The former minister also took issue with plans to have armed officers on school campuses. Former Minister of Education Desmond Bannister is giving the sitting Minister of Education Jerome Fitzgerald an F rating for failing to have every school in the country fully repaired before the start of the new school term. Mr. Bannister says while well under the FNM administration, repairs were completed in record-breaking time. But he says it appears that the government is up to its old habits and have not only neglected a list of schools, particularly in the family islands, but he charged that this administration has placed the financial well-being of their political friends ahead of the best interest of students. The Stanyoki School requires a new roof. Repairs were scheduled for the summer of 2012. Regrettably, no repairs whatsoever were effected at the school during the summer, leaving our precious students and teachers vulnerable to the elements. The Crooked Island High School was extensively damaged by Hurricane Irene. Funding was allocated under the Free National Movement, and repairs were scheduled to proceed during the summer of 2012 so that students would have been able to return to school at the beginning of the new school year this month. All of the restoration work could have been completed during the summer break. Regrettably, the PLP did nothing whatsoever at the school. No repairs whatsoever were effected at the Low Sound Primary School in Andros. As a result, sixth grade students are now using the computer room as their classroom, since their classroom is no longer habitable. Another issue is overcrowding. Mr. Bannister believes much of the overcrowding in schools has to do with the government's failed attempt to focus on the growing population in southwestern New Providence. While the FNM government built the SC McPherson Junior High School, Mr. Bannister alleges that this government spent almost $200,000 on Claridge Primary. Instead of focusing on schools in New Southwest New Providence, the PLP government spent $196,000 on Claridge Primary School in the minister's constituency. More than the amount they spent on repairs at S.D. McPherson Junior High School, the Anatol Rogers High School, and the Gerald Cash Primary School combined. And more than was spent on the Carmichael Primary School and the Garvin Tynes Primary School. Despite this, the work at the Claridge Primary School was not completed in time for the opening of school. Mr. Bannister also took issue with 200-plus police officers being removed from regular policing duties and posted at schools. He is also concerned about the minister's comments on police officers being armed on school campuses. The Free National Movement fully endorses the need for security officers to be posted at some of our schools, which have been harassed by outsiders over the years. However, this is not the job of the police who should prop be properly deployed on our streets to enforce the law and to serve as a deterrent to crime. Now attempts were made to get feedback from the Minister of Education. However, we can tell you that school repairs in New Providence and Grand Bahama were reportedly nearing completion at least a few weeks before the new academic year began. The minister also noted recently that of the 74 contractors awarded, 20 of them received work from the ministry for the first time. He said the number of Bahamians seeking contracts from the Ministry of Education increased tremendously this year, and in addition to schools in New Providence, repairs to schools in Grand Bahama and the Family Islands began during the summer break at a cost of $4 million. A visitor to the Bahamas has apparently drowned in local waters. Details still remain sketchy, but police tell us the alleged drowning took place in Exuma. According to reports, the deceased male is believed to be a U.S. citizen. He was found unresponsive in waters in Exuma shortly before 10 p.m. last night. Police say they are investigating the circumstances surrounding this incident. Stay close. We've got more news right after this break.